Hi guys, it's Dee here from Fitter Training. I'm just going to do a little video um, to explain the benchmark coding. As I'm aware, there's quite a few coaches that are using the system and maybe coaches that aren't using the system that aren't aware that this is a feature that we have on our website. Um, so benchmark coding is basically uh, a way that we type in um, certain exercises to be able to then give clients on the other side, on their view, some more individualized training content. An example would be if I've got 100 people following one program, if I'm going to type in, let's just open up this tab here, I'm going to type in a certain code to relate off my one rep max back squat, then those 100 people on the other side are going to see, they're each going to see a different weight depending and based off their own benchmark that they've recorded. So it gives them more individualized content Adds a little bit, of, well, it adds a lot of value to to your program and to your service as a coach, and it also helps simplify um, the client experience when they're in the gym and they're about to start training, so they don't have to um, start getting calc calculators out and, and doing maths. So, in terms of inputting a benchmark, is really simple. You can you've got two options. You either remember you can either remember the code, which I've got in here, and, and, and after a while, when you start using the same certain codes you will just start to remember it. Or you can simply just click link, link benchmarks and you can search for your code. If you wanted a uh, 5K, 5K row. And then you just click that row and this is the code here and it'll insert the benchmark for you. And it'll, it's important to know that it'll insert um, where the cursor last was before you clicked on link, link benchmark. So there's loads of different benchmark codes that you can use. You can, you can search through them here. And we can also, it's pretty simple for us to um, input any new ones if you have any suggestions um, of, 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 of different tests or different benchmarks that you'd like to individualize the, um, your client's content off the back of. Um, so that's how to import a benchmark. If I move along and, oops, and just show, so this is just a, I've just used a template week here just to show you. So this isn't the usual calendar, it might look a little bit different. Um, but if I show you gymnastics, some examples of gymnastics. So you can do, like I say, the possibility to do many different things, but you can do holds. So as you can see here, we've got an LSIT hold, and I've used uh, the LSIT hold benchmark to calculate 25% of their max hold. And that's inputted 14 seconds. And then we can also use that same code to um, to give the rest period. So we've used a one to four rest period there. And obviously, depending on if someone can hold an LSIT for only 20 seconds, then that's going to give them much a much different um, session. Um, and then further down, now we've got we've inputted this as a benchmark as we found. When I say we, uh, as when I'm programming for the guys on JST Compete is that a five minute test is very relevant to kind of like workout pace and people's and, and clients thresholds in a workout. So you'll see here I've got, uh, I've just typed out EMOM times 10, pretty um, simple session. And I've, t I've typed in 12.5% toaster bar. Uh, and what that has um, come out as, that's based off their five minute AMRAP of toaster bar. So that client will receive six toaster bar and that's, that's based off their benchmark is 50. Now it's important to notice that this preview box is just mine as, as a coach. This isn't what, they're not going to see anything to do with this box, what I'm recording here. This is just like a, a checker for me to make sure that what I'm putting in in terms of the code and percentages will push out a an achievable uh, rep range or score on the client side. So what I usually do is I'll just put my benchmarks in in here so I know that if that's achievable for me and realistic, then it's going to be achievable for everyone else on this program because it's all it's all based off their benchmarks as well. Um, so move along and show you some conditioning examples. So we've got run, we've got running, we've got swimming, we've got bike conditioning scores, rowing, um, anything you need there, and like we say, any other scores that you want, um, we can put them in. It's pretty simple to do. Um, but you can see how I'm using the same code to be able to give like incremental um, paces. So if I click preview here, I've typed in a max um, 20 minute watts. 
So on the client side there, you can see we've got five minutes at 269, five minutes at 278, five minutes at 286. Um, so it really just, like I say, it individualizes that content and it takes a lot of stress and hassle and just messing about on the client side when they go in to do the trading session. Um, and there again, another example of rowing. Works a little bit different on rowing because um, what we've done with the code is made sure that you just put in your total time for the 5K row here and the system will work that out into your 500 meter pace. Um, you see, I've added that just to make sure it, it's um, easier to, to figure out on the client side. Um, one thing to point out while we're on this view is you'll see that I've used an at here and an at here. Now, what the at symbol in this computer development world means is it's getting the website ready to recognize that some text, some coding is going to be inputted. And once that at, that, that at symbol goes green, that's, that means that that text has been um, recognized as code, and that, in, that at symbol will then disappear. So what we then have to do is, uh, is input our own at symbol, because we actually, as coaches, might use the at symbol to actually um, say the word at. You could also just type the word at. But then it just looks like you've got a double at on the coach side, which is just something to get used to. You could just type it at, or you could just put like a hyphen, um, just to show there if, if, it, if the double at kind of confuses you. So that's how we can use it for conditioning benchmarks. Um, we've also just imported this just recently. Um, uh, so if I had put on preview there, if uh, if you want to be given some nutritional guidelines for you know breakdowns of meals for the day or for certain uh, well throughout the day or certain meals or snacks or whatever, um, then you can just you can use the the, the calorie uh, benchmark here to give a indication kind of breakdown of of your macros <clears throat> and we hope to develop this kind of the whole nutrition side of things a lot further to be able to link in um, things like recipes and breakdowns of further breakdowns of meals uh, and macro and micronutrients so taking the the benchmarks back to more training related stuff and um, how to use it as a way to to really like in a more in a more advanced way so We've got here five by five back squats again, which I copied over in the first session. We could do set one at 60%, set two at 65%, and you carry on saying set three at this, set four at that, blah, blah. Or you could just put keep building each set by, and we could put that as 5%, and then in the preview, it shows like that. And uh, another example there with the rowing, which I showed a bit a little bit before actually on the bike, but the rowing, you can put minus zero, which means at your pace, or if you did plus 10, that means plus 10 seconds on your 500 meter average, as you can see here. Uh, so you really can just start individualizing um, a lot of the content, and even to the point of, of every interval that you give. Uh, da, da, da. And this is how we take it one step further. So let's take this workout here, for example, we've got 21.59 of cleans and toaster bar. For some people, that's going to be a pretty simple workout. They get through it in three to five minutes. For other people, that's going to take 10 or 15 minutes because of either the weight of the cleans or the fact that there's 45 toaster bar in there and they might not be able to do many toaster bar linked together. So let's say if they're at a point where they're at singles, you know, they're going to be sat there and that workout is going to take a lot out of them. It's just the skill of that workout is just too high. So what we can do if we've got multiple people following that program is really make that workout relevant to them all. We can keep the 21.59 in for the clean, so that it's at 50% of your one RM clean, and we can make a 21.59% of your toaster bar average and drop that in for the toaster bar. So if I click preview now, let's take someone who's got like a, a 95 kilo clean and they can do a 60 toaster bar in five minutes. That's gonna give them a 21.59 of cleans at 47, and 12.95 of toaster bar. Whereas if you want that that same stimulus to someone, um, let's say if, if someone's got like a one, if someone's got 120, and they can do 110 toaster bar in five minutes, they're going to have a very similar. Yeah, they've nearly got the 21.59 that I've written up here. 
So let's see if we can get it around. Oof, nearly. One more try. Close. There we go. 104. Boom. So yeah, you get the idea uh, of how that can work. Um, and it, it is, we've used it for, so this is a, a feature that I've had on JST Compete now for six or seven years, and it really has um, helped, not only helped the clients, but helped us as a, as a service be able to deliver much more individualized content to um, our clients. And it really is worth just double checking this preview, just to make sure that everything you've inputted in terms of what you look, what it looks like here, it look, looks a lot different to here. So always just come back, check this proofread it over, make sure that whatever you've put in in terms of percentages and coding makes sense. Hope that helps and uh, yeah, look forward to some feedback and see how you guys get on with using it.